Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Dena Tasmai Shi Gurave Nama. Well, it is actually is important for regular meditation to get enough sleep. Because actually the brain needs a certain am- amount of sleep in order to be alert. During the rest of the day, it's, it's very sensitive, sleep sensitive. So when you, when you engage in the practice of meditation, it's good to get to bed early and um, get as much as, as you need. And everybody's a little bit different, but that is something that's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. It says, Yukta Hara Viharasya, Yukta Cheshasya Karmasu, Yukta Swapna Babodasya, Yoga Bhavati Dukaha. And that is that be yukta or balanced. Don't sleep too much and don't sleep too little. It also says, don't eat too much and don't eat too little. Should be balanced in all the things. Yeah. Also, it's described how there's different states of awareness, and one of them is awakened, another one is sleeping, another one is deep sleep without dreams. Mm-hmm. And so, um, even in awakened consciousness, there are a lot of different levels mentioned in the Yoga Sutra about. Um, here we can pass these around. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's, um, any of the extra chairs, we should make a, actually a complete circle, a little closer, and if there are any empty chairs, is there more coming in? So you did it just right, as usual. Thank you. It's pretty good. I, w- I wouldn't have passed in trigonometry, but it was, for all yeah. purposes, I think it's pretty good. Uh, so, th- this mantra meditation is a very engaging kind of meditation because it uses a couple of our senses. When we did our guided meditation, of course, I didn't stop talking very much because we only had a a short amount of time uh, when we sit in meditation we can become more and more aware of the inner workings and it's very helpful to think about the breath and also observe the mind and also observe the other functions inside like the intelligence to see how we're, we're getting a little broadcast coming in from a higher source and just be aware of the inner workings so that we're not always externally oriented towards our life situation. That's very helpful. So, um, in the mantra, we find a kind of um, active engagement in hearing. And the idea is that the mantra has its own um, spiritual power. This is the idea behind mantra because it has an inherent potency. Just like if you take a drug, it looks like just a little white pill. And that looks insignificant. But there's a lot that's gone, that's behind the pill. Uh, There's a formula. And when you take it, uh, the results are predictable. And uh, it, it transforms you in a way. And actually, if you look up the meaning of mantra in the dictionary, it says that it's a transformative sound vibration. So that's the idea. So those who do mantra meditation regularly uh, learn to uh, depend on the mantra. They study about the mantra and they see what its potencies are and then they practice uh, listening to the mantra. And I always think of it, uh, when I go to Japan, I see a lot of people fishing. It seems to be uh, one of the activities for retired people in Japan. In fact, I'm going there in two days. And I know I'm going to see, where I walk, I see people fishing. And I just notice that they, they'll keep throwing the lure out there and rolling it back in, throwing it out, rolling it back in. And s- sooner or later, the fish comes and bites on the, on the hook. So in a similar way, when we're, when we're chanting the mantra, like you keep putting the mantra in front of the mind. The mind is... is um, has a, has a disease called rascalitis. Uh, just like monkeys, they're rascals. At least the, the rhesus monkeys live in, in uh, 
some of the towns that I stay in in India. They are, they're always thinking, how, the mind is like that too. For no reason it does crazy stuff. And it's, um, it's, it's rascaldom knows no bounds. And so it has to, the, the, the mind is, is also like a fish. So you throw the mantra out and you reel it back. And sooner or later, the, the, um, the mind, it starts to get interested in the mantra and then it'll grab on. So the mantra catches the mind. And when your mind catches on the mantra, you'll know it. You'll feel it that, oh, my mind's uh, been transported to another level. And that takes a little practice. You have to be patient like a fisher person and put it out there and reel it in, put it out, reel it in, and keep doing it until the mind catches because the mind's going to be, um, be playing all kinds of games until it gets caught. And once you catch the mind on the mantra, then you're going to get somewhere. And you're going to have some um, profound experience, even if it's very subtle at first. So uh, man means mind, and thra means to catch or to deliver. So learn how to catch the mind on the mantra. And you can use the mantra at any time of the day, but one of the reasons we use these beads is so that you can do what I was talking about earlier and I gave a name to it, F-A-T, fat, which means, if I'm not incorrect, focused attention training. So you have to do a little F-A-T, or focused attention training, uh, with the mantra, and these beads help because you get the tactile sense, and you also get to count the mantras one after another. So the way we do it technically, we use the thumb and this um, middle finger, and we hold one bead. And then you roll the bead between the thumb and the middle finger, and you chant one mantra. And when you're done with that mantra, then you move to the second bead. And on your string of beads here, you have 108 uh, beads. And if you chant 108 mantras, and you listen to all of them, I guarantee you'll have a good day. <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> the reason, one of the reasons that we count the mantras is called numerical strength. When you consistently do a certain number of mantras every day, then um, it overrides the mind's desire to uh, be interested and not, then not interested the next day or the next week. And so it's a discipline and you keep it going. And if you can do that for a little while, then you'll start making progress in mantra meditation. Are there any questions? Then what we can do is... Uh, I jumped in pretty quickly. Do you have any questions? Then w w would you like to uh, try together doing a little bit of mantra meditation, using the beads, and then saying the mantra? Okay, the mantra that we're going to repeat today is called the Maha Mantra, and it's got three words, Hare, Krishna, Rama. And the, the mantra goes like this, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, and we'll go kind of slowly so that we can hear each syllable. And uh, we're not going for speed or anything like that. Just to, to see if we can um, keep bringing our mind back to the mantra. And use it as a, a meeting point. That when the mind takes off on you, and it will every couple seconds, then just bring it back to the meeting place. It's like a lost child in an airport. It's like, where did he go? It's like, okay, bring him back to the meeting place and we'll start over again. And then you just keep going. And in this way you can practice, what did I call it? Focused attention training. Are you ready for a little FAT? Okay, let's try our FAT. So don't chant on this bead. Just start with the one to the side of it. And we'll go for a little while. When you, when you hear me uh, change the music, then you'll know to, to stop. And if you want to keep your eyes closed, it's OK. Or open whichever way you want. Take just a, a minute with your eyes closed to sort of draw your attention inwardly and set a purpose for chanting. If you're thinking of a way that 
you want to do some service for others, or you want to improve yourself in a certain way, just kind of make that intention before you start the chant. And we'll just take about 15 seconds for you to think deeply about a way in which you want to improve yourself or do something for someone else. Now I'm going to start the mantra, and if you'll just join me in unison, we'll go for a few minutes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा यू नो आई वाज व्हेन आई वाज चैनिंग आई आई रिमेंबर दैट मेडिटेशन वी डिड अर्लियर एंड इट वाज हेल्पफुल फॉर मी टू गो थ्रू दैट डोर अगेन एंड देन क्लोज द डोर बिहाइंड मी because i was realizing there's a lot of safety in there when you just uh, allow yourself time to go beyond your life situation into that inner space which is really safe and i was thinking about how it it's my choice to go in there if i want to and i travel a lot and i have a very public life and when i get back to my place in berlinging i live in a garden not literally but you know <laughs> but I, i like to go in there and be quiet for a while as long as i'm in town and you know have time to like just be introspective and i was just thinking how you can do that in any time or if you can do that learn to do that and even and sort of be alone in a crowd be able to even while you're mixing it up with the world be able to retreat have a place to go inwardly where you can experience your center and be centered. So normally I ask everybody else for their reflections first, but this time I jumped in the front of the line. So now I'll ask you if you had any thoughts or experiences while you were doing your meditation this time. Yeah. Yes. It's it's interesting about the visualization thing because while I was doing it like for me like the previous one was easier than this uh because I felt like uh It felt like after a bit, it felt like I was on autopilot. Like yeah. I'm doing the beats thing, and I'm saying Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, and then oh, I can think about something else while I'm doing this. <laughs> so yeah, it's an excellent point you make, and I, you know that brings up the the fact that the chanting, meditating, it's it's heavy lifting. You might say, oh, it's just all nectar and happiness, but actually it takes a little work. And my friend Chaitanya Charan used to, likes to give this example. He's a um, a uh, author public speaker and he gives really nice examples. So the example he gives about this I really like. So you join a gym. It's January 1st, so you're, you know, obviously you have to. So <laughs> you go to the gym and you know you get a little training how to lift the weights and everything like that. And then after a week you think like, you know, I like this idea of coming to the gym but lifting the weights is a lot of trouble. So I'll go to the gym. I'll do the exercise, I just won't lift the weights. So then you're there and instead of picking up anything you're just kind of going like this going through the motions so it's possible with mantra meditation or any other kind of meditation is just to actually go through the motions but then you don't work at it you don't try to bring your mind back to the center and and then it can be what's called niyamagraha you're just doing it for the sake of doing it because it seems like a good idea and you know you should but then uh, you don't do the heavy lifting so it's good to know ahead of time that it takes a little bit of work like any other discipline that's worth anything and um the mind goes all through all kinds of states and you know one of them is called me which means i just don't care <laughs> me as in like you know what do you think me <laughs> and this is actually described in the yoga literature that that this is one of the ways in which there's no distraction you're not sleepy but you're just not interested and this is a kind of uh, one of the ways that the mind is sort of out of tune with the reality and so it takes a little tuning a little time just as it does to become a musician or anything else you know you got to keep doing it so thanks for bringing up that point uh, what other thoughts did you all have i'd be interested to hear yes yeah. Nice That's an interesting point too. It's first of all that you know you kept bringing it back. And that's one of the things that Krishna teaches teaches in the Bhagavad Gita about meditation is if you're if you're not meditating, you don't know your mind's going anywhere because you're not really trying to keep it in one place. 
But when you meditate, then you have that meeting place in the airport for lost children, and you have to keep, you know, you have to know where it is and bring the, bring the mind back, a little lost child. And so that's the practice. And then the second thing you said, it started getting nicer at the end. And, you know, you can do one round like this, and the first 107, there's 108 beads, can feel like, you know, torture. Because, like, I'd rather be anywhere else but right here. But then you get to number 108, and all of a sudden you have a, a breakthrough experience where you go like, wow, that really felt sublime. Uh, and that's important. If you try to get at least one of those a day, a breakthrough experience, then it changes your whole perspective on life. And those things add up. And they add up to a life that is very rich inwardly. Thank you. Yes? Um, and I think it's, for me, coming from the place of choice, right? I made the choice to stay here and do it. So then I, ha I can do it with the full uh, focus or not do it, then just leave it. And the more I practice that, and knowing that I made the choice to be there, I wasn't pushed to be there, it helps not just with meditation, but other things too. Mm. If I'm in a meeting, either I need to be there, if I feel like I don't belong there, or I'm not adding, just leave there. We have the option, right? But doing that and multitasking, like mind wandering, is not really helpful to anyone. So it's coming from the observer. Mm -hmm. I made the choice to be there, and then I have the control of my mind and body to be there and be aligned. And then there's the signals that I have noticed by time while observing, which tells me where I am. Mm. And if I can feel like being aligned, then I, you know, the tool set of feeling like aligning them helps and you be there. But if not, I do it in the meetings and nobody called me like, are you out of your mind? But it's the meeting is going well and I feel like I'm not contributing and then I can add value somewhere by being somewhere, then I excuse myself and leave. Mm. So th that was a very helpful comment. As it, it's, it's really that we have free will to choose where to put, put our attention at any, any one time, and that's more consequential than anything else we have in our life, is where we choose to put our attention. Mm -hmm. And when you actually decide and you put it there, then there are consequences, consequences, there's a sequence that takes place after that. And uh, that's one of the reasons it's important to study the science of mantra meditation, and there are lots of books and seminars about it, because the mind uh, has a mind of its own, mm -hmm. and it can decide at any time that it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And therefore it has to be a little bit informed, what's in it for me, for the mind. And when the mind knows that there's something in this for you, then it has a tendency to stick around more. One of the poets, Bhaktivinod, who taught med meditation, he said, Nam bina kichunahi ko oro choda bhuvanamaja. He's talking to his mind, he said, there's nothing else that you can get anywhere in the world. It's all in this mantra. You know, it's all available. Which is kind of uh, compelling. Any other things? I am very fortunate to be part of this group. Like, uh, so far I, I have I wanted to do these type of things, but I know it did. But today I came here. Everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, one another uh, thought is, like I actually said, like multitasking. So we have very limited or bound time period in a day, right? So we have a lot of things to cover. We have to finish up our minds to tasks, all of that stuff, in addition to that family and all that stuff surrounding all other stuff is there. So to get focused, at least I feel like I felt so peaceful now. So going forward, um, how can I make time for these type of activities in a regular manner? How can I adopt those things? What, what's, what are the things that I should do? Well, one thing is to, to start and do what you can do. Uh, don't wait till you can do everything that you want to do, but even if you start with a really small 
uh, amount, it, the tiniest bit of mindfulness every day uh, really starts to open things up for you. It's like a wedge. The thin part of the wedge is tiny, tiny, but that's the point. It opens up something, and if you give a little pressure, then it starts to open up more space in your life. It's not so easy, because our lives are really packed up to, the, to, up to here. So we have to find the smallest of openings and then start there, and then it starts to open up. Another mantra I slipped in there during the meditation, and I just want to remind you of it, is, is a good thing to keep in mind from, for staying in the present. And that is, the point of power is always in the present moment. Please repeat. The point of power, point of power is, always the the power is always in the present moment. It really helps to keep that mantra going, because the mind's always expecting things, expecting more, thinking like I'll do it later and I'll do it better later. No, the point of power is in the present moment. Do it now. Whatever you can do, do now, right in the present po moment. And from there, everything else will expand. So stay in the present moment and take advantage of the little things that you can do now, like mantra meditation. You, you can just do a few beads every day, but just the act of sit, sitting down and purposefully focusing your mind on the mantra, even if it's just for a minute, will start to open up things for you. Sometimes I spend eight nine hours, mm. and at the end I think like you know I just count what I delivered, and I see mm. zero. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes just half an hour, like you know, just when your yeah. mind is very stable, mm. you accomplish so much, and after six seven hours, even if you do not do anything, you feel you are done. Like, you know, you did a big problem. So yeah. that 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 is yeah, because time is something we create. Our minds create. Yeah. There is no real time. We brought that up in the slide deck that, you know, real productivity takes place and when you're in a focused state. And another example that often is given is about a person sawing on a tree and the blade is so dull that it's not cutting and somebody else comes by and says, take a few minutes to sharpen the, the blade. And the person says, I don't have time. And just keeps doing this without any effect. But this, you know, taking time for yourself to go through the door, to actually connect with the mantra, and even if you can do it for a, a small amount, it sharpens the saw, and you're able to actually be effective in the rest of your life. As you just pointed out very nicely. That was great. There was a uh, one-hour webinar on Salesforce uh, internally on stress. Mm. And there was one point that they mentioned that we keep rehearsing the past, uh, half of the time, or we keep rehashing the future the other half of the time. So we are never really in the present. Mm. So when I was doing my mantra, I was like, I will not rehearse my past. I will not think about my future. I'll try to be present. Uh, although I was not 100% successful, but yes. TBC. <laughs> to be continued. Mm. What do you mean by feeling surrender? Mm, it was like I really was wanting to feel kind of like, like letting go, and I made some comment about letting go. So I'm kind of mm. in that space right now, and yeah. the, I was trying to feel the surrender, and I felt a little bit of support from the group, and I was kind of like trying to let go. Like you dropped the mouse? I was trying to. <laughs> I just got the pinky left. <laughs> It, you know, it's amazing how much psychosomatic um, activity is going on in our bodies. In fact, when I was at um, 
at college, I took a class once in psychology called psychosomatic optimization. And the professor pre presented a lot of evidence about the relationship between the body and the mind. And uh, I know for me, when I travel, I'm always in a hyper state before I get on the plane because trying to get everything done before I leave. It, this happens every single time. As soon as, the, as soon as you feel that little jerk where the plane's pulling back from the gate, I go, <laughs> I'm just out. And uh, like I can't even control it. And, uh, but because I know it's a very internal thing, right? And it could be something like that with your back also. That you know, you hold a lot of tension in a certain place and when you go to that place where you know, you're letting go consciously, then your body also responds. It's so intimately related, our body and our minds and our, and, you know, our attention and our spiritual side, right? It's a holistic process. Yeah. Well, we did the best we could today. Hopefully, whatever damage we did to the material world is permanent. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was great to see you all. I like this room. It's really yeah, nice. It's really nice and light. Yeah. And... Um, as I think you pointed out, then people, they get it. Uh, Maybe they are <laughs> on osmosis. <laughs> through osmosis, yeah. So thank you very much, everyone, for taking your valuable time to hang out. Go up for a you go? See you again soon. Not to the arm, 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 Not